Reef boys and girls, how we doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be ranking every single one of our five transfers coming into Newcastle United this season. Every single one of them have been fantastic. Of course, we haven't seen Jan Minta yet, and that's who we're going to pick up on first. Jan Minta went straight out on loan to Champions League now side, Feyenoord, where you could potentially play him in the round of 16. No, I'm, I'm joking. I don't think Feyenoord will get that far with their current group. I mean, it's unfortunate for him. Now, we bought Jan Minta for £6 million from Danish club Odense. Yes, it was Odense. The Gambian wing out just looks full with absolute promise. He did have some problems over in Denmark, though. It was something like he was staying out in nightclubs late and he wouldn't turn up to training, but hopefully he gets that put behind him. Otherwise, we just won't tolerate him whatsoever. You can't have that as a top professional athlete. He scored his first goal on his debut, a penalty for Feyenoord against Peck Zwong. I mean... You, you can't ask for more, can you? On your debut, a goal. And he recently did score against Utrecht, I think it was, in a 5-1 thrashing. Many other Feyenoord players scored on their debut as well. We can't really rank Jan Kubermenta, as we haven't seen him in the Newcastle shirt yet on a football pitch. I am just going to give him a 7 out of 10, as he looks great for Feyenoord. And every time we sign a player, I would love to send them out with the Dutch league. High competition. You genuinely do grow there. I don't think the championship does much for when we send players out on loan then they never seem to come any good from it. Now, swiftly moving on, we didn't have too much detail on Jan Kubaminta, but one man we have a lot of detail on is Sandro Tonali. What a footballer. I love this man so much. He's probably my favourite Newcastle United footballer right now. And what a coincidence that we're going to be playing his old team in AC Milan in the Champions League. Our first Champions League fixture is away at the San Siro. I don't know if the fans are going to like his reception or they're just going to boo him to hell. By God, I hope they don't boo him to hell and they just give him a good reception. I mean, he was a fantastic servant for them. Apparently, he was a season ticket holder who has AC Milan tattoos. You've just got to respect that even if he was a normal fan you would respect him if you've seen him on the street but anyways apart from that we signed Sandro Tonali for 55 million pounds the club's second highest fee in our history of course Alexander Isak topping that but wow what a footballer he is he's played his whole life in a double pivot which of course is a number six he plays as a number eight mostly on the right hand side for Newcastle United we could see, potentially see a switch into a double pivot with Bruno Gimaraes and Tonali do I want that to happen that's for Eddie Howe but I would I would love to see Sandro Tonali just play in a, in a pivot and just see how he does play. But he's been absolutely fantastic in a number eight role. Whether he's defending, whether he's attacking, he looks like a real box-to-box, -box, although playing on the right-hand side as well. Uh, I would not change him for the world. For 55 million in today's market when Caicedo's getting bought for 115, Declan Rice 105, Enzo Fernandez 100 million, Tonali looks like such a bargain. Whether that's buying him from the Serie A, you know, Italian football, they're all in debt. Whether that's got a fact at playing it. I do not know, but this man is such a good footballer. He'll harass the team down. He doesn't stop. Whether he's off the ball, he grafts so hard for the team. And I think that's what us Newcastle fans just love. Just players that try. Every single player on there tries. But Sandro Tonali takes it that extra mile. And I love that so much. I mean, Sandro Tonali just looks the absolute pinnacle of our midfield right now. He is so good, man. Like, he actually gets me off my feet as a centre midfielder as well. He is so good. I love this man. If I could give him a 10 out of 10, I would. But I just I like to stay a little bit humble. I see that and I do want to give him a 9 out of 10. So Sandro Tonali, 9 out of 10. For the footballer we've got, the quality of the footballer in today's market, 55 million as well. I am bringing these things into the equation. That is fantastic. Sandro Tonali, 9 out of 10. Moving on to Harvey Barnes. Sandro Tonali is not the only football player that moved away from their boyhood club this summer to come to Newcastle United. Yes, you know that Harvey Barnes is a Leicester City fan and Newcastle United signed him this summer for £32.6 million. Wow, he is another great footballer. I really do like Harvey Barnes as a player, whether he's on the left-hand side and he cuts in with his right, but that is definitely his best attribute. We've seen that against Villa. Of course, he's already broken the deadlock on his debut. He scored against Aston Villa, and he probably could have scored again if he didn't square it to Wilson in it against Aston Villa, but he just looks like a fantastic footballer, whether he's starting or will bring him on. He just he looks class. He really... He, Eddie Howe, it's one of Eddie Howe's signings. Of course it is, but... Eddie Howe monitors these signs. He knows that the, they are going to be brilliant for him and they're working his system perfectly, as we're seeing against Villa. And I hope that he can execute this against Brentford as well, which I really think he can. He made 146 appearances for Leicester City, 35 goals and 20-plus assists. 
He was a key part for Leicester City. Whether it was getting a European football or just staying in the league, of course he got relegated with them, but he had a very good season that season as well. Bobby Barnes is, of course, one third of the three Englishmen that come to Newcastle United this summer. We're going to get on to the next one just in a second after we raid Harvey Barnes. Now, this, he was £32.6 million. He is older than Sandro Tonali, but he is going to make more of an attacking effectiveness. And, of course, sorry about that, the video had cut off. But yet again, he is going to make more of an attacking effectiveness, and we love that. So Harvey Barnes, I am going to go 8 out of 10. The price nowadays, that's yet again pretty fair. We've done business, okay, moving on to Tino Livramento. For £31.9 million, Newcastle United acquired the signing of Tino Livramento. This excites me so much. He's one of the most exciting on the list for me. We well, haven't seen him yet. He's English and he's a promising fullback. I mean, promising fullbacks are hard to come by right now. It's He just excites me so much. We well, haven't seen him as a footballer. Let's get the elephant out of the room. He's had two very bad injuries. It's something us Newcastle fans were very weary about before he come to Tyneside. He's publicly said he's eager than ever to play for Newcastle United and he feels better than ever as well. He's represented England at under 21 youth level and of course he's represented Southampton in the Premier League as well. Yet again, I think what's really, really pivotal for Tino Livermore to come to Newcastle United is that he is learning under probably one of the best leading right backs in the world. That's because the Kieran Trippier is such a good leader. He's such a good role model. We're seeing in that interview, uh, not interview, sorry, when Bruno was wearing that body cam in the USA Open Tour, he was saying stuff like, "Not let's go win the game, let's get in the scene, let's make a good account of ourselves for the fans. Like that, that, I respect that so much from Kieran Trippier and you couldn't learn from a better right back. He is very pleased and he also said one of the reasons he come to Newcastle was he was learning under Kieran Trippier. That is such a big factor for me and I respect Kieran Trippier so much for that. The reason why I'm using this in a different clip is because you'll see this is a common denominator on the list right now. Nearly every single player is versatile. Harvey Barnes, he can play on the left and supposedly he can play on the right. Of course, he's a winger. He can play on the right. But of course, his preferred position is on the left. Sandro Tonali, centre mid in a CDM. Jan Kubamenta, he can play on both wings. And of course, Tino Livermento can play left and right back. Preferred position yet again, a right back. And Lewis Hall is very, very versatile. Probably one of the most versatile on the list. But we're going to get into him right now. Before that, we're going to rank Tino Livermento. And I am going to say a 7 out of 10. Just because of everything combined. Promising, full back. We don't get many of them. And English. And we haven't seen him play on a pitch at St. James's Hall in a way ground yet. Yes, we've seen a, a tiny little cameo against Manchester City. But that wasn't much at all. And he excites me so much. Let's hope he can get a cameo against Manchester City in the cup this time. But yet again, I would rank him higher if we've properly seen him. I would rank him lower if he's had bad performances, of course. We well, haven't seen him, but just everything into account. 7 out of 10 for me on to Lewis Hall. Now, the lifelong Southern Geordie. Wow, what a story that is. A Newcastle United fan and his dad and his brother alongside him have followed Newcastle United the whole life. He's been for staging to us here when he was little. I love that so much. And yet again, I'm so excited to see Lewis Hall step on a pitch Hopefully sooner than later, because I really, really liked his cameo against us when we beat Chelsea 1-0 last season due to a fantastic draw with a goal. He was an 18-year-old stepping on that pitch, a left wing back. He looked like the best player. I mean, that is mental to be a full back and look like your best player. It's it's unbelievable, especially an 18-year-old as well when there's fantastic professionals on that pitch. I'm sure Bamiang and Kovacic and Kepa, Rhys James and them was playing. Maybe not Rhys James. I mean, he plays like 15 games a season. But anyways, yet again, he does fall into the category of versatile. Centre mid, left wing back. We don't use wing backs, but yet again, he can play there if we're ever changed to a five back. I can guarantee you we won't. And he can play left back, of course, which is his preferred position. I love that so much. It, it, versatile. We need that for squad depth. The one place where we really needed a bolster up for squad depth, in my opinion, this is drifting off the video a little bit, is centre-back. We've seen that right now as Botman's injured. Burns having to play centre-back, target playing left-back. Hopefully, Hall and Livermento can get some minutes at left-back. Both can play there as well. But yet again, what a fantastic signing Hall can be. He's joined on a loan with obligation to buy. Yes, you can see it's a loan, whatever. I can personally guarantee you, and I have nothing to do with the club, of course, he will be a full-on Newcastle United player permanently next summer. And I am going to rate Lewis Hall yet again in the seven. We haven't seen him step on the pitch. I hope we do soon, but I can't really give him any other signing apart from pure excitement and promising ability as well. So... 
there we'll have it. Is there any player you would rate higher or lower? In my opinion, I think these are pretty fair. Do let me know down below because I really do appreciate it. Leave a like and drop a subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. And we should be doing transfers outgoing very soon. And I will be including loans as well. I was going to do three separate videos, but I'd rather do two so you get more enjoyable content. Thank you very much. I've been Jordy Josh.